Good morning, Zodiac, and welcome. It's this old family read. I'm going to get this one in tight. Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> I want you to be able to see the cards. Uh, and we're going to do a four-card pull, kind of what I usually do. But um, <clears throat> just, just kind of general. Always with the daily soul family reads, kind of keeping track, you know. I don't know, the thought that came, I always think of what comes to my mind first in the morning, you know, Mercury dominant with, uh, you know, Virgo rising, <clears throat> Mercury on the IC. Um, and it's a thought I had from before, the map is not the ground. The map is not the ground. And that came to me when I was first studying astrology, and it was like some higher part of myself saying, don't get confused. <laughs> um, it's a map. I always call it a, our natal chart. It's a star map of the soul's purpose. If you're good enough, I mean, you can, you can always have free will. But you definitely you're going to see the themes that we're here to deal with. And it's, it's complex, and charts are complex and beautiful. And you, you, in the families, you see the threads. I, I think like if in my world, <laughs> in a sane world, you know, children would study their own natal charts at an early age in a, a positive, neutral way. You know, not a lot of people are introduced to astrology by shaming. Oh, you're Sagittarius, me. Oh, you, you just must be an asshole, didn't know how to commit. Oh, you're Virgo, you're all, all uptight and you got OCD. Uh, oh, you're Scorpio, or, are you fucking my mother and wife at the same time? <laughs> So you, you get these so, net, and so what's going to happen is the first thing, you know, anything about astrology, and the first real hit you get off of it is that somehow you're an asshole. <laughs> doesn't really make you inclined to, to be interested in astrology. Uh, I feel so bad. It's like astrology gets such a bad rap. <laughs> uh, but I always think, you know, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Uh, to, with this reading, I mean, really go anywhere. Uh, I like to look at transits are important, you know, it's part of our lives, you know, it's not, uh, and also uh, the map is static and the ground is dynamic, it's the second part of that, the map is not the ground, and that's, that's the important part, <laughs> and that's what transit looks, looks at, that's what progress looks at, another thought that came to mind uh, for you guys is, um, uh, if you know the date of your first meeting of any love, or any relationship, or in your job, um, first meeting charts, I think, are always uh, enlightening. Um, you really got to look at them. Uh, compare them to your progress. Compare them to your natal positions. If it's a lover, then there's their progress, their natal. Look at all the transits, how they're ongoing, and um, how how they're how you know. Particularly, you want you know when you when you do a like an event chart, you're basically uh, taking a snapshot of the transits at that time so this whole world is why there's astrology it, because it, you know at that time you know when you met you know both of you were having well, always some kind of significant good bad uh, harmonious inharmonious aspects to each other's planets to your own planets and you know but you throw in an event chart sort of nail nail that transit energy right when you met and um really could do the same thing if you, you know well enough as you look at your um, synastry chart um, together um, if you know what the transits were you really look at the outer planets or the biggies you know, and Jupiter and Saturn okay guys I start with the bottom of the deck today because I got ten of Pentacles so that's rock solid that's um, really grounded um, Financially feeling good, um, I'm I'm putting out the vibe of um, for trying, you know, more and more, and that's manifestation consciously working with my own mind to say no. Actually, we're we're fine. You don't got enough food, and uh, we're actually blessed. We live in paradise. We have love. We've got you know health. I mean, it's not bad. It's like I'm a wreck, but getting better. And. Uh, um, and so, yes, it's like, this is not really about being rich. It's about feeling okay and grounded and, and strong, and capable, um, and, and healthy, too, I think, Ten of Pentacles. And as an overall energy, I almost could feel it like as the intention. 
of the theme of what's going on here with us. But here we are. Wow. <laughs> so, moving to this Ten of Pentacles overall energy. This is this is where we're at. This is where we're going. Right now, we got to deal with the Ten of Swords. Um, the Ten of Swords doesn't have to be as bad as it looks, you know. Um, <clears throat> Because it's so, such an ending card. Um, and it, this makes all kind of sense. Especially now with this Pisces moon. Uh, I could go, always, always go back to Lionsgate. Um, you, you know, this is like uh, the manifestation's already in. It's already on the way. Whatever it is, right? Uh, harmonious, inharmonious, soulmate, twin flame, uh, job, uh, health. It doesn't matter. But it, it's a lot. It's coming. They call it the uh, astral train because... It's a done deal, but it just, in our timeline, it hasn't reached yet. And let's say it like that, like, in 5D, it's, you've done it. And in 3D, you're not seeing it yet, because there is no time on the other side. And, <clears throat> and it's divine timing. It's always divine timing. If you have that faith, you know, why not? You could believe everything is random, or malicious or, or you could believe like whatever happens it's for the best and leave it behind you know and sort of like also having faith um that's faith in god faith in source faith in buddha or muhammad whatever you want to have faith in um that everything is happening for a reason you know and if some part of us is kind of dying off uh this is our mind I think these are just negative programs, and you know, guys, just a lot of them. There's a look at that. It's like they're, looks like the Matrix uh, screen. They're just raining down these swords, but it also look they're raining down. I'm gonna be buried in the earth, and he's dead. It's over. This shit is over, man. Thank God. And it's just in time, and it's just energy coming in. I'm looking at this beautiful moon. It's still pretty full. Uh, over the Colossio neighborhood, <laughs> birds, a beautiful day. It's a little bit cool, you know, you're the Caribbean, you know, they could be sweaty and hot all the time, but so it's very blessed. Yeah, it's a, it's a time when I think there's huge changes. There's, I can, I'm kind of not kidding. I think there's this energy. I mean, it's not just me. Um, it's um, extremely high vibing energy, this crystalline white light energy. Uh, from literally the, you know, whole galaxies moving into a dis different section of space. And it's just raining down this energy on us. And it has to do with our thoughts, which have to do with our intentions. Um, it's been kind of difficult for me, but it's, it really hasn't been that difficult. When I think about how difficult it has been in the years past, even in the very most recent years, it was a nightmare to me emotionally. And now it, it really does feel like it's not that bad. And um, it's like I feel like I have the time and the inclination and the resources to manage my own mind. And, you know, I'm done with this stuff. So I'm in. You know, life's too short. Three of Cups. So this is the energy that's in our blocking. I don't really see this so much as being third party stuff here. You know, cups are emotions, and I'm saying I think these are thought patterns. Um, so, what's blocking us in this is that emotionally, you know, we're attached to these thought patterns. And I think I can tell you how this might work. Um, like, for me, like uh, triggering, so abandonment issues, so you're a significant other does something that's not even, I don't know, you're in the store and you part and they won't answer the phone. I mean, when you have abandonment stuff, uh, it can cause this emotional uh, feeling attached to it. That's just an example. It's like so much of this, so many levels of this. But then that feeling, I think, you know, causes uh, actual changes in our biochemistry and hormones. And literally we can get a rush, you know. And then what you have, um, is a, a trigger setting off this reaction that we kind of get accustomed to or addicted to you could even say right that rush people maybe like that rush of challenging death or of, uh, whatever it is 
Um, but because we've known it all our life, you know, it's something familiar to us, even though really consciously with our thoughts, if we're done, we don't want it in our body. You know, I have PTSD, particularly around loss of a dog. And even recently, I, I would just think of it and go kind of like, like this. And uh, it gets into our bodies and it's hard to get out. That's a lot of, you know, whatever you want to do, an inner work, break a... Um, but just being aware of it, that there's an emotional aspect in um, three of cubs, threes are actions. I always see twos, you know, you're choosing threes actions. So it's nothing about third party, anything here. This is about uh, uh, being in that little turmoil about these thoughts going away. And now the feelings are there. I, I think like what I do, because I think I was told my friend, I think I'm really insane, but I love myself now so much. Um, but, you know, I'll have a little talk with myself and get together and sort of discuss this. And it, Because when I feel it, you know, I, I catch it and I go, and then I realize it's going to make me feel a certain way. And I just override it with uh, what I believe is reality. Because the, these things come from our child self creating programs. So many uh, children are amazing, you know, but they're, they're not, sometimes these are, imagine, we're creating programs before the age of reason. You know, that's biological. You see it with Saturn, right? Transits, maturation. But, you know, you can nail the uh, age of reason, uh, theoretically. I'm, I haven't read the heart, any, things like that. God, why can't we do that? You know, uh, there's hormones. Uh, do hormonal checks on children and see if, they, if their adolescence, you know, lines up with that opposition. But, you know, anyway, um, this is that deep kind of work of sort of like deprogramming uh, these, uh, um, you know, patterns, these uh, programs basically that we wrote to protect ourselves. Because I figured when we were kids, the only thing we had was our minds to do it. You could really run away, you couldn't fight. Um, so it was logical to create some kind of program in your mind to help deal with things. But they have to be rewritten, refined, and a lot of it to me is a feeling of talking to my inner child in, in, in a very uh, uh, nurturing uh, but also authoritative way um, and just uh, telling them how it is and saying like, no, no, it's not that way anymore. And here's why it's not that way anymore. Just in my mind, it sounds crazy. I don't, actually sometimes I do it out loud if I'm alone. <laughs> because it's kind of work. I mean, somehow there's all kind of methods, you know, uh, <clears throat> that you could use, but to detach uh, those thought patterns from the emotions. And then I think you're finally done. Here's my card coming up as advice from spirit. Powerful here, temperance card. Wow. This comes up a lot lately. And it's that feeling, the advice from spirit is just focus on the fact, and here comes the Ten of Pentacles, focus on the fact of what's positive. It's, it's that it's corny, you know, uh, but um, um, focus on what works, not what doesn't work. That's temperance. Yeah. And um, kind of gratitude too, I think would see with this, is stopping to be, have gratitude. As you, we pick up on these thoughts, and we, we, I mean, I got the feeling like we're slaying them. We're slaying these negative thoughts, but let's be clear, we have a shit ton of help. It's raining down this energy, raining down and cleansing our minds. I hope that God is killing the reptilians, and that's, I'm not even joking. I'm tired of mincing words about it. If there's not reptilians, there damn well should be, because it would definitely explain the horrific evil that we suffer you know, in this world. And I, I just don't believe it's human. I don't think humans are this bad. I don't. I think uh, something knows exactly how to bring out the worst of us. And that's why there's so much negativity in the world. And left to our own devices, you know, I don't think we'd be going to war with each other. <sighs> Reassurance, Ten of Pentacles. Reassurance, advice from spirit, temperance. We got this. We got a lot of help. We got an army of angels. We got an army of angels. Uh, we got the cavalry raining down in the way of this incredible energy. And many people saying it's 
that we've never seen this on earth before. I mean, if this also, if I could, you know, mince the dates, but, you know, everybody I think can feel it. The Aquarian age is starting. And the old system is just this bullshit fear and everything and control and the misogyny and the, this, you know, kind of a sat, Saturnine, you know, dominance, hierarchy, bullshit. It's going to go. And that, that's what you're feeling. Um, and, you know, not going to go without a kick, but I think it's going to go. Everything's going to, I think everything's going to be all right. <laughs> and why wouldn't it be all right? Because the outcome is the Empress. I mean, that's a hell of a read right there. I tell you, this Ten of Swords, I tell you, it's nothing to worry about. This is good. I don't care if everybody says Ten of Swords is bad. It's like the last of the thoughts are clearing out. The last of these patterns, let's be clear. These childhood uh, programs, they're literally like, imagine like a programmer, you know? If you're a programmer, you probably immediately, your mind start clicking, you know? Well, what do you got to do? You got to go in and find that program, and then you either got to delete it, and, you know, I call it integration. The better way is integration is, uh, you know, uh, rewrite that program. And now, from the point of view of having gained boundaries, and wisdom and understanding of the world and understanding of yourself having a you know refined yourself over many years now you know it, you know wouldn't a programmer like if you wrote a program 30 40 50 years ago or 20 years ago or 10 years ago uh, wouldn't you want to go in and kind of take a look at it and tweak it and kind of you know uh, as a professional i think right and i think that's kind of like what's uh, been done you know i think you're basically done that and you end up being the empress here, you know. <laughs> I don't know, can't get much better than that. Um, that's the strongest person in the deck there, empress and the emperor. So, it's my Venus return still. Uh, it's just lifting today, but um, it's Venus energy too, keep in mind with the empress. So, um, it's strong, but capable of being vulnerable. Um, it's very strong, uh, but it's also nurturing and abundant and giving. Um, you would literally then become the person that people would come to. Um, you might be the person people come to with their problems uh, for or for advice. And um, you, because they know they're the empress. I mean, who else are they going to go to? Um, wow. So thank you guys. Let me know what you think of that one.